All right, we got the metal welded in. Now we need to figure out a way to seal it up so we don't get any drips inside of the car to affect the package tray in the back of it because any window problems you have back here, if water gets in, it's either gonna go down into the wheel wells and cause a problem back there, or it's gonna cause a problem in your package tray and the package tray falls out and your car falls apart while you're going down the road and it looks like something out of an old, you know, 1920s Keystone Cops video. I can't show you that because if I do, I'll get gigged, so just imagine Keystone Cops in your own little head there, okay? If you're too young to know what I'm talking about, you're probably too young. For 45 years, the Miller family and the dedicated staff at Autocrafters have been here helping you to restore your dream Ford. Thank you for your support. Here's to another 45 years of delivering parts for your Falcon, Fairlane, F100, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, last week we went in and welded these sections in on both sides of the car. Uh, and when Ford put this stuff together, they caused an issue because they had three pieces of metal coming together. A lot of this was double deep. And like right here on this section of it, there's a deeper portion that you're gonna have to worry about for water intrusion. They also have spots like right here where there's just an absolute gap between the upper uh, rear section of the car and the plate that is for this quarter panel. This may even have two separate pieces, but I'm pretty sure the quarter panel came up here and ran out across here on these cars. This has to be filled and Ford went through and ran a seam sealer all the way around that. And we're going to do something like a seam sealer, but we're actually not doing seam sealer here. What I'm going to be doing is using a product for its none intended purpose. We're using the 8115 from 3M and this is a panel bonding adhesive. But we are going to be using this as a seam sealer because we have so much rusty metal in the back back here and this is an area that sees a lot of water intrusion. We're going to show you how to clean this out, use this as a product that it's not supposed to be used as, which is as a seam sealer. Why am I using an 8115? Simple fact is, the 8115 has corrosion inhibitors in it that most seam sealers do not. And I want to put this down on the bare metal, get it into some of these cracks and crevices and crannies that I just can't get uh, any kind of cleaning products down inside of. Because normally, you know, I would probably use something like Evapo Rust or I would use something like Osfo to get in here and clean the metal up before I went in and did any work on it. But some of these places I can't do that. So this is a good effective way to help prevent corrosion. Now we will come back in after everything is done, everything's had a chance to dry, and we'll be using the product I'm showing you now, which is a 3M cavity wax. This is for this kind of work, and this will be good for the car for long term. This will be something that will help this car stay nice for years and years to come, because it will actually seal it up and keep these areas in the back from rusting after you're done. I know, I'm going to do a little story time right now, and pull this out of here. Story time. There's about a million ways to skin this cat. You can use correct original Ford seam sealer, but you're gonna to have to go in and put paint down first and then put the seam sealer in on top of the paint. That's what Ford did. There's also what we're doing here, which is to use the panel bonding adhesive as a seam sealer in the whole back window area of this car to seal everything off and make sure everything is nice and watertight. There's probably another way out there to do this as well because there is almost as many ways to do this sort of work as there are people to do it. And I'm sure some of you body guys may want to come in and say something to me about, hey, you really should have done it this way. And you're probably right, but I did consult with two professionals. I talked to Larry Shirley over at Palmetto Paint Specialties. Now, Larry is a licensed 3M technician. In other words, he's learned how to use all these products. And he told me when we talked about it that the 8115 is not a seam sealer, but you can use it as that in this instance because it will help impede corrosion because of the stuff that 3M puts inside the bottles. And I also talked to my friend Jeff Lambert of Greasy's Garage. I put a link to his channel down here below me. Uh, Jeff said the same basic thing, that yes, you can use a, a panel bonding adhesive as a sealer as long as you're using it in a correct way, which is to get the metal nice and clean, as clean as you can, and then just put that in there and then clean that line up and use it to seam seal the edges. How many ways do you want to skin that cat? 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the materials list, what we need to do for when we're using the panel bonding adhesive. Uh, you're going to need some good, clean wire wheels. If you have wire wheels that you've been using for other things, like you can see some particulate around the wheel on this one. It's got a lot of schmutz on it. You don't want to use that when you're cleaning your panels down for this kind of work because it's just going to put contaminant on the metal and that may cause problems with adhesion for anything you're using, seam sealer or otherwise. So you want these to be clean. And what I'll do sometimes is I'll go in and clean these up real well with some uh, carpet or choke cleaner. This is a good way to get this off and it's basically almost like acetone. It'll clean them up enough that you can use them for doing seam work like this. Uh, you should be good to go that way. And I'll have several different sizes. I'll have these two cups. I'll have a smaller one like this, a larger one. You can use these fiberglass types that you can get at the tool stores. Uh, I'm not as crazy about them because they will actually throw fiberglass up into the air and, uh, you know, not good for the lungs. So I tend not to use the fiberglass because of that. And I'll use this package of what I've got going on here so that we can make this stuff stick. How do I make this stuff come out and go where I want it to go? Because it is an intermix program. Let me cut the bag open here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like any good epoxy that you have out there, you have the main gun system here. And then you also have an intermix tube. Here you've got um, this variegated stuff inside of here. And what this is is an intermix line. You're gonna need one of two things in order to make this work. You're gonna need this guy. The ADK 564000 I probably can't even say that word. I'll probably have to bleep it out because, you know, they don't want you talking about pew pews on YouTube. And heck, you might not even be able to say pew pew anymore. Anyway, this is the DP2X200 from 3M. This is not cheap. <laughs> this belongs to my friend Larry Shirley. Um, he works at uh, Palmetto Paint Specialties here in our area. So I borrowed this from him, waiting on my other one to show up. It showed up, and so I don't need this now. But the nice thing about something like this, if you're doing a ton of this kind of work, is it's got adjustability for air. You can, the trigger is kind of adjustable for the amount of flow you can get out of it. The other one that you can get is this one. And by the way, that one is about $400. This one you can get off Amazon for like 87 bucks, fairly cheap. Uh, that's what I paid for this one when I bought it. I am a little more comfortable with the idea of this than the air gun that I've never used before at all. I have used one of these before, so I'm comfortable with it. All right, I have my drill motor, and I'm going to go start off with this one here. Putting on some semi-safety glasses. All right, you'll notice that there's some brightness here in this metal. That's indicative of that being lead. This is a lead right here. It'll also, when you rub it with your finger, which you probably shouldn't do that, but if you rub it with your finger, you'll notice that the lead comes up. I'll stay away from that better, more now, and I'll probably go get a mask on when I start working this area for it to be nice and clean for the panel bonding adhesive. Uh, but I'm gonna keep working up into here. This area up here also, is a lead section as well, so I want to stay as far away from that as I can also. And I'm getting to a point in that corner. I need to try to go a little smaller. I don't know if I'm going to have anything small enough to get right up in that corner. We'll see. Do you see any kind of brown smoke coming up, you know that you've still got rust in that area. You want to keep wanting to grind on that with your wire wheel until you can see that it's not showing any kind of signs of rust. What I'm looking for along here is to see if I've got problems with any other small holes that can possibly be filled with the panel bonding adhesive. Looks like there may be one back that way. Um, seam sealer looks okay. What you've got here on these cars is this panel here comes up and there's, a, there's actually a window seal here. 
So you have this panel, then you have this L here for the back glass, and then you have this sitting in, I believe this panel comes down, comes down and then folds backwards and is probably spot welded to this back up underneath there. There may be like two pieces of metal here. This over here looks pretty darn clean. I'm pretty good. This up in here, which I'm gonna to need to get some of this panel bonding adhesive up in it, is a little rusty still. And I'm gonna to try to get that with a cup here in a second off camera. But I'm gonna to try to get this further cleaned up. And when I do get it cleaned up, I'm gonna go in and then look at some of these places and make sure I don't need to put any of the panel bonding adhesive down here to seal up any little pinholes that may be coming up along the window channel. All right, now what I'm gonna do is because I can't get down into that corner right there, I've got some evapo rust, and I'm gonna take and run that in here to get rid of the rust that we've got there and just neutralize it. Um, again, this is a personal preference thing. Some guys like using Osfo, some guys like using evapo rust. Some guys would tell you to go in there with a needle scaler. Some guys go in there and tell you to use a, uh, a sandblaster. I don't. I don't want to use any sand in a corner like this because there's too many places the sand can go and create a rust problem possibly down the road. So I'm just going to use this to get in that corner and let it kind of do its thing a little bit. And then I'll take and clean this up and get rid of the um, evapo rust with a little bit of the carburetor choke cleaner. Again, not correct product. You should be using other things in order to do this. Uh, but sometimes you use what you got and the carburetor choke cleaner will help it work and then I'll hit it finally before we go to final with some acetone. Also brushing a little bit out around it. Go get me a brass brush if I can find one. See if I can get in there with a brass brush. All right, got my brass brush. This one may be too loose of a bristle, I don't know. That may actually be seam sealer, the old seam sealer. Yep, that is exactly what that is. The old seam sealer was white, and if you get in here with rust on top of it, it's going to turn a rusty color. And the only reason I'm getting picky about this is that's a corner that's going to see a good bit of the panel bonding adhesive. And yes, I'm going to have to sharpen my knife after this. All the old guys are out there cringing, but I know every one of you has probably done it too, so don't feel too badly about it. Yep. I'm going to leave the rest of that seam sealer where it's at and I'm going to let that evapo rust soak in a little bit. It'll turn the metal a little bit dark, but it will also be uh, much better for uh, the adhesion after we go in and spray it down with some of the carb choke cleaner in that corner. And then we'll be ready to start applying sealer. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go sharpen my knife real quick. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I've got a hole in the metal back here. It's kind of hard for you to probably see it on the cameras, but I'm gonna take and put some tape in behind this to dam it up so that the panel bonding adhesive doesn't just run right through that. I don't know how thin this stuff is, but I imagine it's not, you know, like body filler. So I am going to put a dam in there to hopefully keep it from going all over the place. Just a little hole in the bottom corner there. Take and break that off. Put it on the back side here. There. That should do me. And I think now I've gone in and sprayed this with some of the carb choke cleaner to again just get most of the junk cleaned out from here. I'm only going to move to about right here. The original seam sealer is pretty good from here on over. 
And I am going to use this gun. Uh, this is the one that I bought. I'm not comfortable with using Larry's very expensive one. It's not because it's expensive, it's because I've never used it. And this is the one that 99.9% .9 of you guys are gonna use. So I just wanna let you know there's other options out there, but this is probably what most of you guys are gonna buy if you're gonna be using panel bonding adhesives. Okay. Now this is the 3M gun, so we know that this one's gonna work the way it needs to. You only get a couple of tips with this, uh, so be advised of that if you're doing something. Try to get everything done that you're gonna do before you start laying in the panel bonding adhesive, otherwise you'll end up with a problem of having to go buy more tips. You can get the tips separately from the canisters, but you need to make sure that um, you've got all that worked out. I'm gonna throw on a set of gloves here just so I can mush this stuff in the corners and all that kind of stuff and up into seam areas that I won't be able to probably get to with a brush and I can kind of smooth it out with my finger. Now, according to what I've seen in red, you take the tip off. All right, so now you're gonna to wanna to take and run out the material until both sides are coming out clean. Then you install the intermix tip <laughs> and get the stuff all over your gun. And you pull that out, drop this on, and you can actually reapply that piece right there. All right, now what you need to do is you need to run this out to get a clean solid intermix. I'm going to go in and lay a line starting about right here all the way over into that corner. Doesn't need to have any in there because there's nothing in that lower corner. There's a hole right up there that I'm gonna to try to fill up that I can't get to with the uh, welder. I like this stuff. This is gonna lay in nice. I'm not even gonna to have to use the tape on it. It doesn't look like. I'm gonna overfill it a little bit. Oh, heck yeah, get some, man. This is good. I'm gonna go into that seam right there. That one I probably will have to work. And then I'm gonna lay some in here. Cause this was absolutely chock full of seam sealer. Deset the gun. Try not to set it into the stuff on the car. I've got this one set up to pull the seam on the backside. So that'll drive that seam sealer or the panel bonding adhesive down into that corner. I'm gonna come back this way with it. Now I'm gonna take one of my other brushes. Put my glasses on because I can't see. And keep in mind, I am gonna come back in here and sand this to within an inch of its life. This is my replacement for the lead. I want this as flat as I can get it, and the panel bonding adhesive will probably flatten out some more from where it's at. All right, so now this has to sit for about four to five hours before it's dry enough. You can actually go in and sand the panel bonding adhesive. All right, next day, I'm gonna pull tape on this. And the cool thing is it's gonna actually, some of this is gonna pull away with the tape. These areas where I've got um, the material sticking up above tape line or above the line of the back window, I'm gonna probably have to mess with a little bit 
to get those to lay back down. And I'll just go in and do some sandpaper on the side of it. I've got this piece of uh, sandpaper from my belt sander, small belt sander. And you can just sand this stuff down just like you would any kind of body filler. This is just some 80 grit I'm gonna run through here until I can get this down to metal and running around the corners. I think this is actually a pretty good way to do this. Um, I kind of wonder if this isn't like my grandmother when she discovered that you can make cakes out of a box. <laughs> Dad said that was the death of my grandmother's cakes. But it's an easy way to do this kind of stuff right here. You can use this to fill those seams up. Um, we had some voiding up around here behind this pin uh, that was causing us some issues. We weren't able to get in there with the welder and we weren't able to get in there with anything else. The panel bonding adhesive actually filled that up quite nicely. So that's good to go. I'm going to sand this down and then we're going to talk about what to do after you've sanded it. I'll probably get after what's inside of here. You may not be able to see it, but there's a little lump from a spillover that came over that top edge. I'm going to probably get after that with my Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel on it. I've said this before and I'll say it again. What did we do before we got those Dremels? This I'm not going to worry about too much. I will clean this up when we start to get ready for final paint. I'll get that cleaned up. I'll probably come in here with my 80 grit off camera and sand this down just a little bit. The, the panel bonding adhesive is sandable like you would sand any other body filler. Um, you just don't want to go too wicked with it and then come in with some primer. Pull the rest of the tape and we're rocking and rolling, buddy. I'm really pretty happy with this. I'm not going to do a whole lot here. There's a couple of high spots, drip lines and stuff. And so all I'm going to really do is just kind of make those flat -er. And this line right here, I'm working this. It's really tight because we've got these pins in here for the rear window moldings. And those are, let's just say they're in, they're in the way of any really dramatic sanding I would do. And I am going to have to work this pin with picks and tools so that it uh, lays the way I need it to because this pin has got junk all around it for me putting the adhesive on there and it's going to need to be cleared in order for the um, clip to sit in it. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave most of this alone. The only reason I'm worried about flatness here is because I want to make sure that our, our uh, gasket will sit in this line here well. Um, most everybody I talked to recommended doing a 2K primer on this stuff. This is something I got from Palmetto Paint Specialties here in our area. Um, and it is a 2K, it's a, what, a 368, uh, 0032, it's a tan beige primer that you can use on this and I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and uh, wire wheel the entire window perimeter make sure I've got all the junk out of here all the window clips are gone and then I will spray the 2k all the way around this and then I'm going to go and buy just enough of the uh, vintage burgundy that this car had on it to spray the perimeter of the glass that way it's all covered and it's got the, the correct maroon in there. And then when we go back for final paint, we'll really tape off the back window because for right now, we're not gonna be able to go in and respray the whole car. He just doesn't have the money to do that. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that off camera. That's gonna be done after we get everything done. This is just to show you that you can use panel bonding adhesive as a sealer. Please note that that is not the correct and real purpose for panel bonding adhesive, but it is a great way to get around having to do a lot of the hole filling that you'll have to do in some of these areas if they're a problem. 
Uh, I like this method. I, am, I have enjoyed using it. So I will continue to do this in the future. If we have certain areas that are just small pinholes, I'll probably do a panel bonding fill on some of that stuff in order to get around having to go out and drag the MIG welder out, possibly make bigger holes and then have to grind those holes flat. Welcome to the new age of body production. Or whatever. All right, that's our show for this week, folks. Do me a favor, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you on down the road. Should I just go ahead and buy enough paint to do the whole car? I mean, that's gonna be expensive. This is, even if I do a cheap enamel and clear, you're probably looking at about $1,500, maybe $2,000 in paint, just because that's how it is these days. Paint's made out of oil.